Hello, I'm Pete Lewis, Mayor of Auburn, and welcome to another edition of Discover Auburn. Here with me today is Dr. Kip Heron, the Superintendent of Schools for the Auburn School District. Now, Kip, there's been a lot of things going on, and when we get together, there's always so much we have to talk about, but there's some exciting things that have been happening. Uh, first of all, we've talked a little bit about early learning, and some exciting things have happened since the last time we've met. Could you give me a bit of an update of what's been going on? Yeah, for uh, the last three years, Pete, uh, as you know, we've been working on uh, eliminating any preparation gaps for our students. Uh, we think uh, we want to start strong and stay strong, that uh, our priorities for early learning should be uh, learning to read and then reading to learn and then learning by thinking and learning by doing. And so we really uh, believe that if we eliminate the gaps uh, before kids ever go into middle school, uh, that they're going to be college ready and better prepared and more engaged in uh, the learning opportunities that are afforded them. So what we've done is we've developed 97 partnerships with our uh, preschool and our daycares in, in Auburn. And we've focused the last three years on literacy. And uh, by partnering with our uh, daycares and then uh, focusing on full day kindergarten, uh, we've had some incredible results. I'll give you one incredible result. Last year in the first grade, only 21 students out of 1,074 students were at risk mm. for reading at the end of the year. Um, three years ago, we'd have 250 kids at risk, and we thought we were doing a good job. So that really bodes well with eliminating that preparation gap, starting strong. And now our job is to keep them going strong. Now, because we've been so successful, we just received a uh, half a million dollar grant from Gates um, to do the same for mathematics. Wow. So we've begun that program, and we had, uh, on our first uh, partnerships for math, we had 37 um, daycares, preschools engaged in uh, getting all the materials, learning how to approach uh, the instruction, what those targets are, and how to assess the students, and most important, how to make it fun. And I've seen you do that. I've seen those kids really engaged in that. And this program has come such a long way. And some of those test scores I saw come out last year, that was exciting stuff. I was really so pleased to see that. That's going to make a difference for the next generation of Auburn. It really is. We saw those third graders who, uh, uh, and you know, Peter, we've talked about it, but our third graders tied Bellevue in third grade literacy uh, last year. Uh, those kids moved on to the fourth grade and have uh, got some of the highest scores uh, in the state. So uh, when you uh, learn to read, then you're in a position to uh, uh, read to learn. And when you introduce science books and social studies books, uh, then those students have the skills uh, to be able to uh, comprehend and then start thinking and applying and uh, really being active learners at that point. Well, I'm, I'm really looking forward to watching uh, our young people as they have made use of this early learning and they go on to the next grade and the next and the next and see how that achievement level keeps on ratcheting up in our community. I think it's going to make a, a great difference for our future. It, you know, it is. And, and part of that is, is how a plan comes together because it's been uh, fidelity to the uh, strategic plan uh, that the school board has a philosophy of distributing the leadership from the boardroom to the classroom. And one of the key components that have helped us uh, with this achievement has been our teachers having the ability to collaborate with each other. Uh, we do think teaching reading uh, is rocket science, and um, you don't put a man on the moon. Um, uh, you don't put apparatus on Mars without teams of engineers working in concert with each other. And that's probably been the biggest shift in culture is we have professional learning communities where uh, student learning is a target and the instruction is designed to address where students are individually for learning. And we only use high yield learning strategies. Some learning strategies produce two years of learning in a year and uh, others only produce one year of learning. We want the two year uh, high yield strategies. And then you know you've been a strong advocate for, um, uh, for the Auburn School District when we uh, were launching uh, Accelerating Young Minds where we had you know the technology to be able, the software uh, to have students learn at a faster rate 
beyond the 180 days of a school day. And uh, that program in partnership with the Department of Early Learning was a huge uh, success. In some cases, uh, we had uh, preschoolers learning their letters in nine hours <laughs> of uh, working in a computer model that has a clear target, okay, gives immediate feedback to the learner, gives the learner either reteaching opportunities, relearning opportunities, or it moves them on to the next challenge. And, and then has a data management system to track where students are. And by using technology in that fashion, you can actually expedite one-on-one -on -one learning and mastery at a rate that kids can accelerate from wherever they're uh, located. Rather than being sorted into a grade level or into a class, kids are accelerated from wherever their uh, skill sets are. That would be pretty much 21st century learning. And we're doing it right now, right here in Auburn. It's a good way to summarize it. I think it's pretty exciting, the brain research and showing what early learners can do. And uh, the research is showing that when you actually add uh, acceleration, it's a high-yield strategy, that if you can accelerate students, and that's why we do standards. We call it quality. What's quality skills? We make sure the kids master all those quality skills. But it's not a ceiling, it's a floor. It's from there that then we expand beyond and get into more critical thinking and application of their learnings. And not only is it research for us right here nowadays, but we've turned it into concrete practice and we've proven the results. And any time we've matched or exceeded Bellevue schools, I think that we've come a bit of a way and we have some ways yet to go because I can see this accelerating as we move forward. But I know that's not all that's going on in the school district. Um, you know, I was, I was watching with one of my grandchildren, one of those old cartoons, and it, was, uh, it had a picture of one of those old steam calliopes where the steam was coming up from every different direction. And I was re remembering when we were talking earlier about the uh, Auburn Senior High School. And as soon as I saw that cartoon of that calliope, I kept on thinking of the high school in... Uh, when I looked at those pipes, the pictures of the pipes and some of the wiring things, and kept on thinking, eh, it looks pretty much like the same thing to me. And I know you've got some plans for that, or the community has some plans for that. Yeah, on November 6th, we're putting forward uh, the Auburn High School Reconstruction and Modernization Project. And we're doing that because uh, in the last election in February, uh, we had a 57% yes vote. And, wow, 57%. And I, yeah, as you know, in a democracy, that's a landslide victory in a democracy, but uh, in the world of school bonds, uh, you got to get 60%. Uh, and so we've got it on the ballot in November because we know there'll be more voters and we really want uh, all of our voters in our community um, uh, to go to the polls and participate on uh, an important local uh, issue. But Auburn High School is really in need of our attention. You know, Pete, we're spending a quarter of a million dollars a year keeping those pipes um, you know, operating because we can't leave our learning community uh, at any level of risk or discomfort, so we keep repairing things. And those things that are repaired are less efficient. Uh, the electricity bill at Auburn High School is more per year than all the other secondary schools combined. Oh my. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's not an efficient system. I often describe it as, you know, Auburn High School is a beloved old car. You know, you love that old car. But you know, it's not getting the gas mileage that a new car can do. Uh, doesn't have the safety features uh, for the passengers. Um, it is constantly in need of repairs. In fact, the repairs are starting co to cost more um, than uh, a new car uh, would do. And uh, you gotta depend on that car. We gotta depend on our facility to make it a good learning environment for our teachers and our students. And Pete, on October 1st, we're inviting the entire community uh, to come to Auburn High School and go on tours and have students take uh, the community around and uh, to have some Q&A and pictures around what the plan is. That's five o'clock on October 1st at Auburn High School, and we'll have more information out to the community very soon. So are they gonna go on the tour in some of the rooms that I went into with, I don't think you can use much more duct tape. Yeah, I think the, you know, duct tape and paint, you know, duct tape and paint are the way that we keep things uh, polished up. Um, I, I like to point out that uh, remodeling is something some people ask me about all the time. 
um, uh, remodeling uh, Auburn High School costs equivalent to building a new. Oh, now, the Performing Arts Center is still going to, it's, it's new enough, it's a, a, one of the greatest facilities in King County, is still going to uh, remain, and, uh, and the auto shop, which is state-of-the-art technology. But everything else we can uh, rebuild and uh, get a better return on investment, it would be the same price as uh, remodeling. And with remodeling, we'd have to figure out what do we do with all the students and the staff while the remodel takes place over a three-year period of time. In two years, we could have this school open and serving our students and our entire community. Oh, boy. Well, you know, you, you, your analogy to uh, an old car or an older car, it also has to get you to where you're going. Yeah. And those students, we need to get them to where they need to go. That's the priority, and they need to get there in something where they can learn. Uh, we work awful lot together on making sure our kids have the best possible future. You do far more work on that than I, uh, which I appreciate. Well, we appreciate the partnership. For it's, the it's been a good partnership. Well, I appreciate you joining us for another, dis, another edition of Discover Auburn. And Dr. Heron, I'm glad that you were able to make it to be here with us. And we look forward to all the exciting news we're going to hear about our students in the future. I know that the best is yet to come. Thank you very Thank much you. for joining us. Thank you, Pete.